Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today and this is a video honestly that news is, is still not certain about this one. This is a really weird story honestly in my mind. Um, this is something that you know in my mind I can think of has happened twice before but still that it's happened is just honestly so bizarre. Um, as of right now, Neville has walked out of WWE. Um, honestly, um, the one thing that I can think of is that CM Punk had the guts to do this um, a few years back after the Royal Rumble before WrestleMania 30. I think that would be, that'd be 2013, I think is when that was. I'm not 100% sure on the year there. But, um, and then also, um, Justin Gabriel uh, end up, uh, ended up uh, basically telling WWE to release him as well um, because he was tired of showing up um, to do TV and never being used. Um, for the longest time, uh, he would go out and um, just sort of find something to do when he wasn't on the call sheet. Uh, and then one night, basically WWE changed their mind, decided that they were going to use him in the match, was nowhere to be seen, and when they finally uh, reached him on the phone, he just basically said, forget it. <laughs> you know, just, just tell him I'm done. Um, so, you know, um, for Neville to walk out um, is it, kind of weird. Honestly, in my mind, uh, you know, this guy was the main event of, of the Cruiserweights. He was the main event of 205 Live almost each and every week. Um, he was heavily used on Monday Night Raw. He did just drop the championship. Um, uh, to Enzo Amore, um, who is now main eventing Monday Night Raw. So, honestly, I don't really know a lot about this story because there's not a lot about this story that's out there. But the things that are running through my mind is that is he upset um, that uh, you know basically 205 and the cruiserweights are now used in the main event spot of Monday Night Raw, which. We have been, you know, accustomed to for years. The main event of Raw is the most important match or the most important thing that, that is going on on Raw that week. Um, is he upset that you know his matches were heavily featured on pay-per-views, but on the pre-show, not on the actual pay-per-view? Um, I know there was a lot of talk about when um, Austin Aries asked for his release from the company um, was. Uh, basically he was not going to get paid for the Wrestlemania uh, 33 uh, DVD and Blu-ray um, release which is a, a pretty good check for a lot of guys uh, because the pre-show which had the Austin Aries versus Neville match was not put on there in the bonus features like it has in years past it just the show was too long and they decided not to put the another disc in there and it just wasn't there uh, he wasn't going to get that payday and decided that the uh, the Indies were, was probably a better way for him uh, to do what he does. Um, I can honestly tell you that I think right now people who watch 205 Live probably honestly really like it. I, I think if I watched this show, I would enjoy it for the same reason I used to enjoy watching NXT. It's only one hour of wrestling. I know that the guys are featured on pay-per-view, uh, the guys are featured on uh, Monday Night Raw, uh, but I think that if you just watched 205 Live, you would be able to get the gist of everything that is going on inside the promotion. They did do the Tozawa um, title change against Neville, they did do the Enzo Amore against Neville on, on Monday Night Raw, uh, but... Um, no, I think that Enzo won the title on the pay-per-view. I think he did win it on the pay-per-view, but he has been featured on the Monday Night Raw spot for a few times uh, now. So, I, I mean, I think that they're putting 205 Live and the Cruiserweights in the main event of Raw slot because I think they, they are realizing that um, with them going up against Monday Night Football, they're going to take the L. Um, they want to, you know, stack Raw in the time slot more than likely when, when Monday Night Football is going to halftime, when people will change the channel. And that's when they're going to feature guys like Roman Reigns, um, and the Shield guys, and, and that is going to be what people see so they're able to, you know, keep interested 
and be able to get the uh, the next you know WWE Network special, or the next pay per view like TLC, where the Shield is going to be taking on against um, the Miz and the Bar. Um, to me, I I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I can live without the cruiserweights. It, it, you know, it was a fun idea when it first came up. But I think one of the things that with the cruiserweights having their own show to WWE, they need to be important. And I don't want to make anybody feel negative uh, about what I'm about to say. I'm not going to say that it's controversial or anything like that. But, you know, people came out of the cruiserweight division in WCW. Rey Mysterio and Chris Jericho, uh, Eddie Guerrero. All three of these guys. Eddie Guerrero might not have been a cruiserweight. He might have been... I don't know what you call him, a light heavyweight or a because he fought for the United States Championship a lot. He was sort of elevated, but a lot like Conan was, yeah, outside of there. Yeah, but you know, the guys that were in the cruiserweight division, people did go on to have really good careers. But to me, honestly, in WCW, the cruiserweights went out there and they had those train wreck matches um, that had you up out of your seat. But honestly, those matches weren't really the reason why you were watching Nitro. They were one of the reasons why you tuned in, but we all knew that the Cruiserweights weren't going to be the main event uh, of Nitro. It, it, they just added a fun match um, that sort of, you know, satisfied as you were watching. Um, you know, I think a good wrestling show is going to have some high flying. It's going to have some, uh, you know, a little bit like a, a hardcore action. It's going to have some uh, ground and pound. It's going to have brawling. It should have, you know, uh, you know, grappling, real wrestling. It's going to have a mixture of everything. If you're just watching the same thing over and over and over again, it's going to wear you thin. And um, I, I, I think that, honestly, um, the, 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 the Cruiserweight guys um, should sort of just be mixed in along with Monday Night Raw. And and that, that'd be good enough for me. Um, and Neville... You know, he could leave. You know, he was you know the, 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 the best cruiserweight in WWE for a long time. Um, he's going to have a name when he goes out on the independence. Uh, most people will know that he wrestled as Pac. I will honestly tell you that the first time I heard people talking about Pac um, wrestling for PWG and other indies, I thought they were talking about X-Pac. I ain't even going to lie. I'll put that out there. And I bet you money I get a comment of somebody saying that they thought the same thing. But, um... Uh, you know, he'll be able to do PWG, he'll be able to do other indies, uh, you know, within time. I'm sure that WWE's going to try and hold him to his contract somehow um, for as long as they can because sometimes they like to screw people um, when they embarrass them by just straight up walking out on them instead of, you know, asking for a release and waiting until it's finally granted because they don't really want people working there. They don't want to be there uh, no matter what kind of star, they, you know, they are. Um, so when the time comes, I'm sure he'll be able to go out there and make make a good deal of money and, and be a draw and wrestle in some dream matches um, with, with independent guys that are out there. Um, but I, I, I think that honestly that has a, a window to it, if that makes sense. I think that, that that's going to last for a period of time. Um, I, I heard an interview um, with... Uh, um, shoot, the guy from Too Cool that's not Jerry Lawler's kid, I forgot his name. But he basically, you know, told you what it's like. You know, your first year out of WWE, you're going to make more money on the indies than you did uh, wrestling for WWE because, you know, the way that the indies are drawn out is that, you you know, they pay for your transportation, they pay for your hotel, um, you, you book a set price, and it's high because you're coming off your WWE stardom and they want to have somebody that has name recognition that's going to sell some tickets and bring people in. Of course, then you're also going to be selling your merch, you'll be selling your t-shirts, you'll be selling pictures, autographs, this, that, and the other. And you'll, you'll, you'll be taking cash home from each and every event from the fans. Um, and then, you know, you make the loop, you make a ton of money, and then the next time you come through, the owners of the uh, of the groups are going to be telling you that they didn't make as much money as they thought they were going to, and you're going to take a little bit of a pay cut. And then the next time you come, it's going to be a little bit more of a cut. And your dollars just keep dwindling down. Um, and, and that's just the way it, it works. Um, I, 
I'm not going to tell you that he's not going to go to TNA someday uh, or Ring of Honor or something like that. That that could happen. I just don't think that Neville is a name that's going to sign with one of those companies that's going to change the business um, and and bring them to a different place than they are right now. Um, I'm not going to tell somebody to just stay somewhere and work that they don't want to be. Um, you know, it's, it's it's wrestling. You do what you want, and, and th th that's how it all plans out. If you're not happy, he's not happy, and that's all that matters. But to me, honestly, if I was in that situation, uh, I probably would have lived it out because I, I'm not sure that there's any place that's going to feature you more than Neville. Uh, you're not the champion, but it's not like 205 Live is just going to drop you cold turkey. Um, you know, the biggest thing that you ever did in WWE, um, besides your being the Cruiserweight Champion, was the match you did at SummerSlam a few years ago, um, where it was uh, uh, him and the guy from uh, that TV show uh, against uh, King Barrett and Stardust. And I can honestly tell you that, uh, was his name like Chris Emile or something like that? Um, I, I can honestly tell you that um, I don't think that, you know, that match broke records. I think, I think that honestly that actor was a better wrestler than I thought he was going to be. But they never brought him back. There was never a return match. There was never, you know, anything. It wasn't like he got a huge rub for doing that. So um, it is what it is. And it's been a few years since then. Um, we'll see if they want to bring him back or if they want to just string this out and let him go. Uh, there's a lot more to come from this story. Obviously, someday we'll hear his side uh, on a you know, RF video shoot interview or on a podcast or something like that. Uh, where we'll hear his side of the story. And then over time, we'll hear what the guys in WWE actually think. There's probably guys in that locker room that are cheering him actually having the guts to walk out. Um, we've heard for years that uh, a guy like Dolph Ziggler is unhappy in the company not being used the way that he wants to, but the guy, there's always rumors about him wanting to quit, wanting to leave, wanting to, you know, follow his dream of being a stand-up comedian, but he never does. He always just keeps re-signing and staying there. Um, and it is what it is. So, we'll see. Never quits. Peace out, everybody.